less than that, you would digress due to not enough volume. It's like optimal water on the plant, right? You can't take a little flower and just dump five gallons on it, which is how a lot of people attack training. You're gonna kill the damn plant. But then again, you can't put water on it every six months either. Optimal water absorption, that's how I look at it, okay? So every 72 hours, the body can withstand intense training in the same muscle group, okay? This is the fucking law of land. It works. Same thing with upper. So if I do dynamic upper on Tuesday, my body's ready to hit max effort on Friday. Why you see this not on the weekend is because I laid this out for the military. We had control over Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday, we did not have control of the military. So my my max effort bench day is actually on Sundays because it's my life. For these military guys, I got control over Monday through Friday. I can control what they do. I can't control what they do on Saturday and Sunday. That's kind of just the rules. So this is kind of a week weekday way to do it. Plus in schools, you're not gonna get the kids to come in on Saturdays and Sundays very often, right? It's gonna We're, be Yeah, we do, a, we do a Saturday morning. Yeah. Rest in season in college. Oh, the college, you know what I would do? Um, they we practice in the Saturday morning. Yeah. If we had a, we were in the Big Ten, so we competed Fridays and Sundays. Yeah. This had to be optional, but I would go on a Sunday morning before the match. I'd say anybody who wants to lift with me Sunday morning. So I would find, I, you giving them that option, yeah. and then they own it. But for the most part, yeah, there's, uh, at the Big Ten, they had Mondays off because Sunday and Monday were like yeah. a day we were flying. We were in football. They, they had a Monday through Friday to yes. Saturdays and Sundays to chill. And they might do some structured stuff on Saturday team-wise, but it wasn't lifting. Correct. So the point is, is that this, this works really well, but you can put the days anywhere you want as long as they're 72 hours apart. That's the rule. Okay? Follow that rule. You're already ahead of a lot of people because there's a lot of stupid shit out there right now. Okay? The next thing is you cannot avoid... You have to, because most of us want to increase force production, you have to get stronger and quicker and stronger and quicker and stronger and quicker. Okay, this also forces you to not train in the same realms all the time. So on Monday, if my goal is to increase mass in the force side of the equation, then on Tuesday, my idea of upper body muscles to increase acceleration on the force equation, then acceleration on the force equation on the lower body, then mass on the side of the force equation on the upper body gives me the goal of the day with the core lift. Am I getting stronger or quicker? There's only two things. Bigger comes from accessories and comes from the warm-up. So we've already covered the repetition method with the warm-up and the accessories. These are the core lifts. Make sense? So dynamic effort method or max effort method. The ideal perfect storm in this system is that there's only three ways to train. Max effort, dynamic effort, or repetition method. Everything else falls underneath those categories. Are you ignoring one of those? And if you are, eventually the circle of strength will come back and bite you in the ass. Because eventually, you might be working on getting stronger, but if you're not working on getting quicker, it affects your strength. You might be working on endurance, but if you're not working on getting quicker, eventually it affects your strength. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So quicker, stronger, bigger. Those are three separate things. Bodybuilders are not the strongest guys in the world, right? Powerlifters aren't the most cut guys in the world, right? And guys that are super quick, like Olympic lifters, they don't look the most muscular, right? But they all have traits that they can feed off of each other if they were trained optimally, especially for athletics. Make sense what I'm saying? So you cannot avoid one of those areas very long. That is if this base has already been adjusted and built this way. You can't take it. A six-year-old go, we're going to do max effort deadlifts today. You could see, um, sometimes what's weird from the genetic standpoint is some kids, it's like, I'll tell them, I have never seen somebody jump slow, but you actually <laughs> achieved that. <laughs> or, uh, yes. Or they'll squat and 135 is the same speed as 315. Now, the tricky thing is, like I said earlier, I'm un unable to say, hey, this is the dynamic day. So that kid, if he wants to maybe go heavy, I'll say, okay, we're gonna work up to this heavy five, heavy triple. Then we're gonna drop it about 50%, and we might do a three by three speed or a five by two speed, yeah. because Here's I'm doing yeah. strength and speed, because I know I'm not gonna have that Here's perfect how I look storm. At it. Technique is your main emphasis intro. Only technique, everything is technique. Everything is body positioning and posture. Bear with that. 
In intro two, you have body technique and posture with a little bit of strength. Yes. In level three, you have body technique, posture, strength, including some speed. And then when you get into this phase four of optimization, now it's the it's a fucking open gauntlet of contraction types because you've already built the base. So you're not having to work on technique as much here. Now you can emphasize weaknesses and you can really get the work done. Does that make sense? So the emphasis emphasization changes as it gets more complex, obviously as the as the uh, equation gets harder, which is I'm getting stronger, I'm getting more athletic.